Today's story has been requested by so many of you guys that I just could not ignore it. It's a crazy story that's been blowing up on the internet and they're comparing this case to the actual orphan movie. I haven't watched the movie but it's a movie about where a couple adopts an orphan. She has this angelic look to her. She's like the perfect child that you want to adopt until they realize that she is evil inside and this orphan wants to murder the whole entire family. The creepy quote in the movie is you'll never guess her secret. So this real life version of this movie happened in the Philippines. Pretty much all the sources about this story was in the Filipino language. So I had a lot of fans who DM'd me who translated a lot of it for me. So thank you to all of these fans. Without you guys, I could not have done this story because I, I obviously don't understand it. And this video is done because of you guys. Remember you guys, just hitting the like button on this video and subscribing to this channel really helps me to continue my content and spread awareness about these cases that happen around the world. So this case happened in the town or region of Cotabato in the Philippines. And this is the Maguad family. They were known to be a very kind and hardworking family and the parents were actually principals and teachers at a school. Especially as teachers and principals, they feel the responsibility of helping out kids, especially of those in need. The teachers had two kids. One is a daughter, she was 18 years old, named Krizel Gwen. And a son, Louis, was 16 years old. I'm a little bit confused because they have like many different names that a lot of people go by the netizens go by so i'm not sure which one is exactly their name but regardless the two kids were known to be very excellent in school they got good grades they were very popular because they were very kind-hearted bubbly and in these videos she could see what kind of a bright amazing people they were gwen also won miss english crown in high school and lewis had a dream to become a lawyer so they also had a third daughter well well technically daughter technically not you guys tell me what you think of this relationship is but they also had an adopted daughter named Janice. Janice was 17 years old and she joined the family not that long ago, only about five to six months prior to the incident. Now Jay, she is a real mystery. Now we're gonna come back to who she was in the past, you know, her whole story, which is very confusing and not a lot of people know about the whole truth of the story and where she came from. But regardless, she was a 17 year old living with the relatives of the Mugwort family. So they were calling Janice also cousin at times. It was said that Janice came from a very poor family and she was an orphan she had no parents that's why she was living with this temporary family but the story goes from the internet and the net citizens that janice was very close to gwen and gwen really cared about her she felt like she was kind of like you know her sister little sibling they felt bad for her they wanted to help her and they felt somehow connected to her and felt bad for her you know and that's just how gwen and janice got really close together gwen was also credited for really convincing her parents to take Janice in into their home and become part of the family which is a huge thing to do I mean I can't even do that especially having a whole grown teenager who's almost an adult come and join your tiny little house a big open heart that they had like I wouldn't even do that like I'm not trying to be selfish or anything but you know that's a big responsibility they're not little kids or babies she was a grown teenager so the Mugwort family decided to take her into their own home home and just feed her with love feed her food clothes education i mean the parents were teachers probably unlimited resources of education that they could give her they made tiktok videos together and according to the relative and friends Gwen and Janice were like best friends. I mean, technically now they became stepsisters or siblings or you know, whatever you want to call it. It was said that Lewis also even gave up his own tiny room for Janice and he ended up sleeping in the living room. And this particular day, the parents weren't home. They were obviously working at their school. The teenagers were at home, Gwen, Lewis, and Janice. Now, while the father was working at a school, I believe around 3 p.m., he received a call from, I don't know if it was a neighbor or someone that called him saying that there was an intruder at his house and he needs to come home immediately. Only within 15 minutes, he came running back home, knocked on the door, and apparently the front door was locked. He went to the back of the door, kicked the door, door down somehow and he was calling out to his kids. They were not answering and soon he found out that on the floor there were pool of blood. Unfortunately, he saw something he will never forget which was Gwen and Louis 
just lifeless. He also says there was shattered glass everywhere. Gwen had a blanket over her, so someone put a blanket over her body. But of course, now he was looking for his other daughter, Janice. So he started calling Janice, Janice, where are you? And that's when miraculously, Janice was the only one who called out for help and she survived this attack. The father claims that Janice's hair was wet and she claimed that she came out of the shower um, for whatever reason and at first I'm guessing that he thought that maybe she was in such a shock She wanted to like maybe she was hurt. He didn't know but either way She was in a mess and she was in a shock state as well and come to find out She was also the only witness when the police finally came and she was interviewed Janice claimed that there were three robbers trying to rob their house Clearly she didn't know who they were and for some reason they only killed the two teenagers and not her She says that she ran into a room and locked the door and she was hiding. The way that the police believe the act happened was that someone used hammer and baseball and just like combinations of weapons and unfortunately these bodies were found in such a brutal graphic way. The crazy thing about this case is that while Janice claimed that she was hiding in her room, she was actually trying to seek help on Facebook. She posted these on her Facebook at around 3 p.m. Help me. Guys, help me, please. Someone entered the house. I don't want to die yet. I am inside the room hiding with a lot of tear emojis. A little odd that she was literally on her phone typing and able to post without calling for help. She also texted her adopted parents, Mama, please help but for some reason she did not pick up her phone. I believe she called her boyfriend as well and her boyfriend claims that there was no sound in the background and the phone just hung up. In the forensic evidence, police found broken bottles, a knife, hammer and a baseball bat which was suspected to be used for the murder. Police of course believe Janice. I mean this was a brutal attack. It had to be like three grown men who had to do this. Because they couldn't find who this was, they even set out a reward to the public. If anyone knew any information leading to the suspects, they would get a huge cash reward. But soon, not only the police but the net citizens, the media just could not believe the story. Something about Janice's statement just did not make sense. The first thing police said was that, you know, this had to be an act of rage. Most intruders, people trying to steal things, do not brutally kill someone. This was an act of someone that had intense emotional anger and attachment to these victims. Second thing, nothing in the house was stolen. Any money, any valuables, jewelry, nothing was stolen. So how does it make sense an intruder comes in and just kills someone and just leaves without taking whatever they wanted? And the the biggest clue was that the weapons that was used by the suspects all belong to the family. The hammer was actually the father's and he claims that he put the hammer in the laundry area where only Gwen and Janice knew where it was. The baseball bat also belonged to their son Louis which was stored inside of his room that Janice was using at the time. There's no way an intruder that comes in is just going to dig through weapons. It means that the suspect had to go inside Janice's room that she was hiding in to physically take the hammer and do the act. Police also found a plastic bag with blood stains on it, including pants, underwear near the house, and it was just thrown out. Police believe that it had to belong to the suspects. Starting here is when the netizens and the internet start to go wild with their own theories because they just found Janice to be so suspicious. I mean, this girl, she is smiling in the photos. She looks so innocent. She just seems like a normal 17 year old teenager. But why would she lie about anything that she's seen? So of course, people found that post that she made to be super suspicious. Who would be in their right mind to like click on the emojis, find the sad tear button and then like press it. Like it just seemed really weird and unauthentic that someone would would do that in a life and death situation. Also, on the day of the incident, it was the first time that Janice called her adoptive parents mom and dad. And the relatives and friends say that she never referred to them as mom and dad before. And it was just really strange that the day of the incident, she would call them their parents. And people wonder if she did that in order to let them know that she was now going to be their one and only daughter. Another odd thing, why was she taking a shower at the time? 
People just cannot believe in the midst of such a horrific incident that you would be in the right mind to go and take a shower. Was it because maybe she was just trying to shut out reality and just kind of go into her little corner and try to forget everything, just being in a shock moment? Or was she taking a shower because she wanted to get rid of something, some evidences? Janice also testified that the suspects killed the boy first, then her sister, but according to the forensic evidence, it had to be Gwen who went first. Then her brother, as they can tell, the blood was dried up more with Gwen's body. Shortly after the incident, Janice deleted the post of help and later posted a message on Facebook with condolences to her siblings who were murdered. She also deleted that afterwards. But in these posts, she tagged her new siblings' names and had many people who showed support for her. It was said that a couple months back, she was actually caught stealing from the McGord family. She stole around $200. Now for whatever reason she wanted to steal, the family still forgave her because you know babe, she's a, she's young, she's a teenager, she never probably had money before and it's a new family and she was probably struggling to really fit in with this new family. Her boyfriend also came forward and said that once Janice told him that she really did not like the Mugward family and called them too poor. I'm not sure if this statement is true. Again, maybe a lot of the statements are just things that a lot of people maybe made up or words got twisted but supposedly according to her friends she had a lot of these two sides where in front of people she would act really kind and cute and innocent but in the back she would be showing another side of her finally police were able to confirm and match the fingerprint from the weapons especially the baseball bat to Janice's fingerprints. And also, her bloody clothes were found in the back of the house that she somehow tried to hide. And just like that, after she was confronted with some of the evidences, Jay confessed to her lawyer that indeed it was her that killed her siblings. Like what? How did she even do this? Look at this girl. Like she doesn't seem like she has that much strength to overpower two grown bodies. So who really is Janice and what was the motive for her to do this? And she is not who she claims to be, according to the netizens. Now netizens, who are pretty much like online detectives these days, found a post from back in 2013 of someone trying to find their little girl. Now the picture, I'm not sure if it's confirmed or not, but the picture really looks like Janice when she was younger. Now this post and people claim that she boarded a ship alone back in 2013. 13 and it seemed like her parents were trying to find her. So she was kind of like declared missing technically. Some say that Janice's real parents were actually abusive and they were extremely poor and could not really properly take care of her and her other siblings that she had. I believe she had about five other siblings. But aside from that, no one really knows the true story and where she really came from and no one can really confirm her background, which is very sad and what makes this case even more mysterious. This is the Facebook page that belongs to Janice and uh, I saw some of her posts and mostly she would repost a lot of memes and quotes. Taking this story and seeing what she reposted, she reposted a lot of emotional things, like very sad. Seems like her emotions were very up and down and she liked to express them through these memes, which a lot of teenagers do. The last post that she posted on Facebook Facebook was a quote, someday all our soon will be finally. I mean, whatever that meant to her. According to the family and the parents, the motive for Janice was that she was extremely jealous of Gwen. This is just a guess from the parents, but it seemed like she really did not like how her new siblings were thriving in life. And maybe finally, you know, having step siblings in her past life and her parents being abusive, and maybe she wanted a family or parents where she solely could receive all the attention without going it to anyone else. The one who takes everything, the one who doesn't have to share. And people do wonder if she had an accomplice, especially her boyfriend, but it was proven that her boyfriend was not at the scene and she solely did this. Maybe she did have an accomplice and we just didn't find them yet. I'm not sure how true this is, but they're saying that the marks on the siblings were not a hard blow. It was a bit of a weaker blow that is possible that Janice, a 17 year old female, could have done. It's still unclear how she was able to overpower two people 
They believe that Janice did this to Gwen first while the brother wasn't looking or he wasn't in the premise. So in my opinion, this had to be very, very carefully planned. This was premeditated because again, how is it possible that a 17 year old just does this and overpower two people without carefully planning it which goes to show you that these two siblings were not expecting this at all she knew where the weapons were and probably got them all set up before she did this there's allegedly elite conversation between janice and her friend before this incident happened where janice texted her friend saying that she wanted to kill somebody and her friends jokes and say i'll help where janice replies no you will tell on me so that's all the information that we have regarding the mcgord case my heart just goes out to these two beautiful souls and the family the fact that they were just trying to help someone and you invite someone with such a malicious intent into your home who would have suspected like in the movie a nine-year-old innocent looking orphan would have such dark thoughts behind those innocent faces there was one post that she posted of this like a very fantasy glittery expensive luxury items and maybe it's one thing that she was really fantasizing and idolizing that she really wanted to get out of the type of life she was living in let me know what you guys have thought about the story again if there's any information that i'm missing or was wrong about let me know in the comments down below if you have any stories that you want me to talk about remember to email me right here and you like and subscribe and hitting the notification bell helps me out immensely and I reply to all my early words. See you guys in my next video.